While President Trump says he recognizes Jerusalem as Israel's capital, lawmakers in our nation's capital are calling for one of their own to step down. Dozens of senators have said Minnesota's Al Franken should resign amid accusations that he inappropriately touched or forcibly kissed multiple women. A new report says Franken will step down on Thursday, but the senator's official Twitter feed posted this saying he is, quote, talking with his family at this time and plans to make an announcement in D.C. tomorrow. Any reports of a final decision are inaccurate. Aaron Delmore is a senior political correspondent for Bustle.com and joins me now. So, Aaron, does Senator Franken have any choice at this point but to resign? The pressure's mounting, and notably, it's coming from inside his own party, including the party leaders. And this is usually the last straw for somebody in his position. Earlier, we saw people saying, well, let's wait and see what an ethics committee investigation turns up. We saw Franken saying he was fully willing to participate and cooperate with that committee's investigation. But now it looks like that tenor has turned. So what if he doesn't step down? What will that mean for Democrats? They'll be having to draw a very hard line. Right now, I think the party is trying to distinguish itself, trying to say, at the very least, this kind of behavior from any party, from any side of the aisle, is inappropriate. It's going to be very hard for Democrats to make that case if Franken doesn't step down and if we start talking about Roy Moore in Alabama or if mm -hmm. we start talking about some of the other congressmen who've been accused. Right. So on that note, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said he does not believe Franken, quote, can effectively serve the people of Minnesota in the U.S. Senate any longer. And McConnell noted that Franken has lost support of his colleagues and constituents. So at the same time, you do have the Republican in the Alabama Senate race, Roy Moore, um, who could be elected next week, and he's facing his own sexual misconduct allegations. So does what's happening on the Democratic side, you think, set some kind of precedent when it comes to Roy Moore? It could, but ultimately this is going to be decided by the voters in Alabama. Mm -hmm. And 71 percent of Republican voters in Alabama say that they don't believe the charges against Roy Moore. Mm -hmm. So if they do choose to send him into the Senate, that's when Mitch McConnell and some of the other senators are going to have to grapple with, do we keep him or do we refer him to the Ethics Committee or do we try to oust him for inappropriate behavior? They're going to have to reckon with that if he makes his way to the Senate. Right. Well, meantime, Democrats Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi are set to meet with President Trump and Republican leaders on Thursday to talk about the looming budget deadline. I mean, at this point, does it seem as though there could be a government shutdown here at the end of the week? Well, they are trying to extend that to December 22nd. Mm -hmm. If there were to be a shutdown on Friday, the indications are that it would be very short term. But it looks like people are coalescing around the idea of punting this decision to December 22nd. Mm -hmm. But that's an agreement that has to be struck with these far right wing House members. Right. They're the ones who are saying we have leverage right now. And Democrats are saying, well, we have leverage, too. They need the votes of eight Democrats in the Senate to try to get a government funding bill through. And Democrats are saying, what about the priorities that we've put forward? Funding mm -hmm. the Children's Health Insurance Program, family health centers, funding natural disaster victims all over the country after everything we saw this fall. So everybody thinks they have a little bit of leverage, a little bit of stake here. But ultimately, when everyone thinks they have leverage, it's hard to figure out who has the power. And this opposition that you talked about in the House from those fiscal conservatives, how much of that was sort of unexpected? Because it wasn't something that we really heard about, right? The concerns of deficit hawks, all that much on the House side until this particular point. Yeah, the House is saying, let's get that tax bill through the door. Right. That's what they want to do. They want to get that legislation on President President Trump's desk. And Republican leaders are saying anything else you do at this point is a distraction. Let us get this one big legislative win over the finish line. But these fiscal conservatives don't want to be toyed with. They came into office on the promise to try to hold the U.S. accountable to some of what they call runaway spending. Mm -hmm. And darn well, that's what they're there to do. Right. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Aaron Delmore, thanks so much for stopping by. Great to see you. You too.